this is another example where we are going to apply Coulomb's law. So we have two tiny spheres, each carrying a charge Q and having a mass 2 grams. And they are connected by two non-conducting strings. Each of these strings is 10 centimeters in length. At equilibrium, each string makes an angle 5 degrees with the vertical. In that position, if the system is in equilibrium, then we want to figure out what is the magnitude of the charge on each sphere. So it's something like this. So we have, this is, let's say this is kind of the ceiling. And then one string is like this. And the other string is like that. And from the vertical, they both make the same angle 5 degrees. And then at these ends, so they are, they are of the same length, we have the charged particles. So you can obviously conclude, I mean, it's obvious that the, the, the signs of these two charged particles should be the same. So that's why... Uh, they will have a force outward acting away from each other so that they are repulsive. So let me call that Q. So I'm just writing the magnitude of that charge here, Q, and also mass M. So they are identical charge particles. The lengths are the same, L, L. And this is the final, uh, you know, configuration. And, and uh, let's call this separation as D. So D is the separation between the two, two charge particles when they are in equilibrium. Now we want to find the charge of each of these uh, spheres and they are identical charges. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to consider one uh, charge, let's say the right hand side particle, and I'm going to draw the free body diagram for that particle. So particle represented by the dot. And then gravity is acting vertically down. There's this gravitational pull towards the earth because it has a mass m. So I'm going to write it as mg vertically down. And then uh, this string, the non-conducting string is tightened because the charged particle is moved away from the other particle. Since it's tightened, there's going to be a tension force along this non-conducting string, and that's in this direction. So that's the tension force. And as I told you, these charged particles are of the same sign. So that means there's going to be an electrostatic force repelling both particles away from one another. So that means there's a force on the right hand side particle in this direction. Okay, so on the left hand side particle, it will be in this direction. So you connect these two uh, charges and the electrostatic forces are along this line. If they are repulsive, the forces are outward. If they are attractive, if they are of the same sign, if they are of the opposite sign, then the forces are in towards one another okay so now uh, so this is the free body diagram and uh, i'll i'll kind of construct a trend line here like extending the line of action of the weight and then you should convince yourself that this angle is theta okay so that is the same angle over here if you draw a perpendicular uh, a parallel line over here then this is theta and this is also theta. So that's the same thing that you see here. Now I'm going to write down the conditions for equilibrium. So for equilibrium of this particle mg, what we have is we have Newton's second law. I'm going to apply it in the horizontal direction and the vertical direction. So just to let you know my coordinate system, this direction is my positive x, this direction is my positive y. So I'm going to apply Newton's second law. Newton's second law in the x direction and in the y direction. So 
in this direction all the forces in the x direction is equal to zero right because it says at equilibrium that's the important key term here at equilibrium all the net forces are going to be zero on that system our system is this right hand side particle that means all the forces along the x direction equal zero and all the forces along the y direction is equal to zero so uh, looking at forces along the x direction i can write i have this force so let me write this f of e electrostatic force i have f of e minus there's a component of tension in the opposite direction and that would be t sine theta equals zero so that's my equation number one and then i will have another equation uh, looking at the forces in the upward direction in the positive y direction i'm going to have t cosine theta minus mg equals zero so that's my second equation so i have uh, equation one and equation two what i can do is that i can divide uh, one by two so like this and then i'm going to kind of uh, put a fee on the other side or I'm, I'm trying to get the sine term and the cosine term on one side okay so i have sine theta is equal to f of e over t and then this is divided by a kind of a rearrangement of equation two where i am going to solve for cosine theta is equal to mg over t you can see t cancels out because it's the tension it's the same tension so t cancels out and then this would give me f of e over mg and then you can see that sine theta over cosine theta is nothing but tangent theta is equal to f of e divided by mg so from here uh, I'll, I'll call this uh, equation number three now from equation number three i'll write it on this side from equation number three i'm going to solve for f of e f of e equals mg tangent theta now you can see i'm not plugging in any numerical values at this point i want to use these symbolic uh, you know variables and this uh, you know algebraic expressions to simplify uh, to a certain level and after that i'm going to substitute the numerical values to get the actual answer now uh, let me explicitly write down f of e now this is where we are going to apply coulomb's law previously we were just doing general physics one uh, equilibrium newton second law application of like uh, vectors uh, in the x direction y direction those sort of stuff now we are applying coulomb's law explicitly i'm going to write down what is f of e f of e is k magnitude of q times magnitude of q so i'm going to directly write down q squared here and q is just the magnitude okay so it says find the size so that means you just need the magnitude not the sign so k q squared over the separation between the two charges so at this equilibrium point you can see the separation is d so i need to write down d squared that is equal to mg tangent theta now we are a step closer to the final answer now you can see we can solve for q right we can you can see there's a q squared so i'm directly going to write down that expression so i'll have q squared and then i have d squared mg tangent theta divided by k and then uh, you'll see q is equal to d square root of mg tangent theta divided by k okay so that is q 
Q. Now, uh, we are given M 2 grams, G is 9.8, tangent theta is tangent 5 degrees, K is 8.99 times 10 to the power 9. However, we don't know D. How do we find D? So this is, uh, this is another geometric challenge. So if you look at this uh, uh, figure, you will be able to see two right angle triangles, one on this side and the other one on this side. So you can see they have the same length, this, this hypotenuse like this length is the same. This angle is the same angle. This is a 90 degree angle and you can see then these two triangles are similar triangles. So if this distance is D, this distance is D over 2. This is D over 2, half of this length and this is also D over 2. So then using trigonometry, we can figure out a relationship between theta, L and D. So trigonometry tells us that uh, let's say we will take uh, the sine sine theta is equal to opposite side of one of these right angle triangle so that is d over 2 divided by the hypotenuse which is l so then you can see you can get a value for d d is equal to 2l sine theta now I am going to substitute uh, this D over here uh, in this expression. So finally, so this is kind of an intermediate thing that we, uh, we needed to find the solution. And then I'm going to write this along with this value for D. Then you can see Q is equal to 2L sine theta times the square root of mg tangent theta over k. Now you can see the right hand side includes all the terms that we are given. We know those things. L is given, theta is given, m is given, g is known, k is also known. Now you can substitute at this point and get the answer. So I'm going to uh, substitute the terms. So I already substituted the uh, values, uh, numerical values for these variables and constants. So then when you solve this, you should get the answer as 7.4 times 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs. So 10 to the power minus 9 stands for nano, the prefix. So you can either write this in this form or you can write 7.4 nanocoulombs. Either way, it's correct. So this is the final answer uh, for this problem.